By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at a match played at Dad Bot Con, an old school tournament held in Utrecht. And we've got two pretty cool decks for you. One is Mono Blue Fish that's piloted by Dauwe Reitsma. And he is taking on a white blue black deck, kind of control mid-range by Bart Schuit. And I have to say I like this uh, kind of controlish deck because I recognize a lot of things of myself in this brew, things that I want to do as, as well. For example, he is playing with Nebuchadnezzar in his deck, which I think is just great. Um, but before I jump into uh, the uh, the deck tech section of this video, it's maybe good to first mention that uh, if you want to skip the introduction, skip the deck text, or just choose what part of the video you want to see first, the best thing you can do is check the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. If you click on there, that will take you straight to the games. And if you want to know more about the rule set of this specific tournament, also check the description below. What I can already tell you is that we are playing according to the Swedish old school rules and banned and restricted list but with a Ravenna reprint policy, meaning you can play with reprints, for example, from 4th edition or Revised or Chronicles, as long as they have the same art, with the exception of Serendip, Efreet and Plateau. Okay, now that that is out of the way, let's start with the deck deck, and I'm actually going to start with the blue fish deck from Dawa. Let's have a look. And here we see the mono blue fish deck, so that's played by Dawa, and... Dawa is, is playing a deck that has seen some good results in the past. I mean, I think this is just a very solid deck, right? Mono Blue Fish, named after the four Merfolk of the Pearl Trident, the four Lord of Atlantises, and of course, the two really cool Dundons that are also in this deck. Love Dundons, it's great to see them. 4 1 Fish, it's not the boats that's a Dundon. Look closer at the art, it is the fish. Now, um, looking at this deck, I think uh, what's Dawa wants to do here, right, is cast his Lord of Atlantises, clone the Lord of Atlantises, um, you know, and, and just make really big fish. He's also playing with Phantasmal Terrains. He can use those Phantasmal Terrains to take out, for example, Mazes of If, Mishra's Factories, Library of Alexandrias, but of course the pluses in his strategy, it also creates an island on the side of his opponent if his opponent isn't playing with blue, because a lot of decks obviously are playing with blue and old school. So if your opponent doesn't have blue, your Phantasmal Terrain can make that happen. And then when you've got Lord of Atlantis on the board, you've got Merfolk on the board, you know, you you can make it work. You know, you can start attacking, your Dundon can attack as well, of course, because remember Dundon has this thing called Island Home, right? It cannot attack if you don't control any islands. Um, now, what I always like about these decks is looking at, okay, what different choices has this specific builder made in comparison to other uh, bluefish lists? And the, the few things that I notice here are, first of all, the two unsummons. So Dawa has decided not to play with Boomerang main. Boomerang is in his sideboard, but he's played with unsummon main. Um, I understand because unsummon is only one blue and you know it can return target creature back to its owner's hand. So it's quite nice if somebody, for example, plays a control magic against you. You can play your unsummon on your creature that destroys the control magic and you get your creature back. It's also great to defend your creature if your opponent plays, for example, a lightning bolt on your Lord of Atlantis. You can play an unsummon, take it back to your hand. And remember, the creatures here that Dao is playing are very cheap to recast. So it's only one blue to get it back to your hand and just recasting the creature is not gonna cost you that much. It's also kind of nice. There's a little synergy with clone here that we see in this deck. If you've got a clone out and your opponent all of a sudden plays like a big beef boy, like a Sheevan Dragon or something, you can play an unsummon on your own clone, recast it again and copy that unsummon. So those are just some little little synergies. Um, another thing that I notice here are the two spell blasts main board. A lot of people prefer power sync over spell blast, but it just depends on what you want to counter, right? Power sync is really good in forcing your opponent to tap lands and also encountering like the big spells and the big uh, permanents that your opponent wants to cast, right? For example, your opponent casts a Sarah Angel, then usually you will have more mana open and play a Power Sync, counter that. But if you want to use a counter spell to protect your own uh, permanents, for example, you want to protect your Lord of Atlantis or your Control Magic from a, a potential Disenchant or, or Lightning Bolt, then Spell Blast is actually better because Spell Blast is you pay one blue and X and X is the amount 
um, X, X is the casting cost of the spell, that's what I'm trying to say. So for example, if you want to counter a bolt, all it takes is one blue and one, and you can counter a, a, a lightning bolt. So it just depends on what you want to do with your counter magic to decide like what is better. Uh, another thing that I noticed here when looking at this list is that Dao has chosen not to play with Surrender Perfreet. I think that actually makes sense. Uh, Surrender Perfreet has kind of lost power since we see a lot of City in the Bottles in the game. So if you would play Flying Man and City and, and Surrender Perfreet, you're too vulnerable for a potential City in a Bottle. So you have to choose and Dao here has chosen to go with Flying Man. Okay, now this is the list of Dao. Uh, I think he stands, he stands a pretty good chance, but his opponent also is packing some powerful magic cards. Let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Bart. And here we see the deck of Bart. So this deck is white, it's blue, it's black, and it's mainly blue and black actually when I'm looking at it. Only balance is the only white card, just a one-off balance in there. It's actually kind of hard for him to cast because he's playing with one city of brass and two planes. And I think the reason he's playing with that is actually also the card that's right next to it, Demonic Tutor. When you're playing with the Demonic Tutor, um, you know, all those silver bullets that you have in your deck, you've got like a double chance of finding them because of Demonic Tutor. So Balance is definitely a, a silver bullet card. It's super good when you're behind. So I kind of understand why Bart uh, put it in here. And remember with Demonic Tutor, you can look up any card. So if there's a scenario where, you know, Bart has a planes in hand, or sorry, a balance in hand, but he doesn't have a white source, he can use his Demonic Tutor to find that white source and to play it out. Um, now maybe first kind of focus on that card in the middle, that tilted card there, that's uh, Nebu Chatnezar or Katnezar, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, but it is a really cool creature, one blue, one black and three to cast for a 3-3 three, three summon legend. You can pay X and tap it and then choose a card name, target opponent reveals X cards at random from their hand, and then that player discards all cards with that name revealed this way. Activate only during your turn, unfortunately. I wish I could just activate it in the end step of my opponent, but you can't. Now this card is really nice, by the way, with Glass of Urza, which is not in this deck. But it's it's really cool to see uh, the Nebu being played. It doesn't see a lot of action. And um, we, we actually see kind of a discard theme in this deck, right? We've got an Amnesia, another card we don't see often, super cool art by Mark Poole. We see a Mind Twist, we see four Hypnotic Specters, we see two Disrupting Scepters. So there's definitely a discard theme in here, but there's so much more because we also see some tempo play cards, for example, like Sinkhole. We also see some aggro cards like, you know, a Flying Man, a Surrender Befreed, the four Hypnotic Specters that I mentioned earlier. So this deck just has, it's kind of a, a jack of all trades. It's not five color good stuff for the simple reason there are only three colors in here, but there are a lot of different cards and different strategies. Uh, there are also some beefy creatures in here, for example, like Saint Gear Vampire, Mahamoto Jin. So, you know, that's also a route you can take. There are some really good control cards in this deck, like Icy Manipulator. A Jam Day Tome is great when you're kind of in control of the game. Uh, we see Nevenerals Disc, which is another great silver bullet. Again, it works really well when you also play with Demonic Tutor because you just have an extra chance of finding those cards when you need them. So, I mean, this looks like, like a strong deck, uh, but I'm just curious how it will, will do against the deck of Dao. Dao's deck is, I think, more consistent and is more linear. It really follows one line where, you know, perhaps Bart's deck is a bit more control and a bit more flexible but that also makes it vulnerable, if you know what I mean. And perhaps, you know, discard against a fish deck, that's gonna be tricky. Anyway, for me, looking at this list and looking at the list of, uh, of Dao, I think Dao is a slight favorite, but feel free to let me know in the comments below. I, I guess if the game takes long, then, then uh, Bart is a favorite. Good news for Bart, by the way, is that Dao is not playing with City in a Bottle, so he can just cast all the Flying Mans and all the Surrender Pafreets he wants. He doesn't have to worry about that at all. And that being said, it means we are ready to dive into this match played at DadBotCon, the old school tournament held in Utrecht, the Netherlands. Now let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. So Bart is showing his hand. Ooh, I see a Mind Twist there, a Flying Man, a Mana Drain. Looks like a really good opener here. For, uh, for Bart, and Dawa is the mono blue player. He's taking a mulligan here. So he's gonna shuffle up. I believe it is 
Uh, Bart who's on the play so he can actually open with that flying man in a moment. So there we see Dawa counting his seven. Is he gonna keep this? It means he'll have to put one card on the bottom and yes he is. One card goes on the bottom showing his hand here as well. A flying man, a clone and a side blast and lands. And there we see a flying man turn one here from Bart and a pass and also a flying man from Dawa. So both players playing the same creature here on turn, turn number one. I wonder if Bart is going to offer the trade. Why not, I guess? There is a Mishra's factory and he's just gonna attack here. Is he going to take the trade? No, he's gonna take the damage. Makes sense this early in the game. There's another blue and an attack here. So he's gonna drop to 19 and a pass. Let's see what Bart can do. Another black source, unfortunately not another island. Remember, he's got a mana drain in hand. Would be nice for him to find a second blue and have a possible counter spell open. There's a sinkhole on a basic island. No counter magic here from uh, from Dawa. There's another attack. He's gonna drop to 18 and a pass turn. Can he find more lands? He had quite a lot of lands, by the way, in his opener. Another attack, but of course the single is going to slow him down. We don't see a Lord of Atlantis. There is another black source here for uh, for Bart. Remember, he still has that um, that mind twist. Is he now going to cast a mind twist for three? I think he is. Yep, there's the mind twist for three. This is so bad here for Dawa. And apparently he doesn't have a counter spell or else he would have definitely played it out here. Going to lose three cards. Unfortunately, we cannot see them. It's out of our range. I guess it's probably a lot of islands. But this is going to be pretty tough for Dawa. I mean, Dawa wants to be the aggressor and it's actually the other way around. So far, there's at least the Lord of Atlantis. So that is something. I mean, if he can find some more Merfolk, remember um, Bart is playing with blue. So that is kind of nice for Dawa. There we see a Plains. He's gonna, ooh, play an Icy Manipulator. And he's gonna attack here, gonna put him on 16 and pass turn. An option with the Icy can be, by the way, to tap down the Lance. But he's tapping down the Lord instead. I mean. It's 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 interesting. It's debatable. You could say I'm just gonna take the two damage, and in return, it allows me to tap down a land of Dao and possibly making it impossible for him to do anything that turn. Of course, he can also just go for damage. He could now animate the factory. Ooh, he's got a surrender of Freed. There is a mana drain on the surrender though, so that is a good answer here by uh, by Dawa, or else the game would have been finished. And again, tapping the Lord here. Like I said, I would consider tapping down an island to kind of slow Dawa down here and take some extra damage. He's on 16, which is pretty high anyway. Tapping three. Okay, there we see. Ooh, a brain geyser for one. That is ugly. Oh, he's got, of course, the mana drain. Oh, forgot about that. In that case, it's not ugly. It's actually beautiful. So Dawa refilling his hand here. Good timing. And there's an island, so he now has two islands open. We can no longer see the uh, the underground sea, but he's got that as well, so he can now use his mana drain. Dealing three points of damage, he's gonna drop to 12. Gonna keep the Lord of Atlantis tapped. And now it's going to be hard for, for Dawa to choose, am I still gonna attack with my flying man? A lot of glare on the flying man at the moment, by the way. I would probably just, okay, he's gonna keep attacking with it. I wanted to say, would you probably just keep it untapped? I don't know. On the other hand, we don't know what's in his hand. There's a Dundun. That is actually kind of nice, because now you're forcing, ooh, mana drain on the Dundun. Interesting. Just wanna make sure that uh, Dawa is unable to kind of flood the board with a lot of creatures. And now, of course, Bart has two extra mana. Let's see if he's got a Brain Geyser as well. He does have a Sinkhole, which is pretty useful. Just taking away another potential blocker and attacker. Attacking for three, so he's gonna drop to nine. And here we see the problem for Dawa, because he's back to where he was. He's back to square one. He again has that Lord of Atlantis and Flying Man, and that's all he's got. He's N9 life, so he's a little bit in a corner here. What can he do? He needs... I mean, even a control magic wouldn't be really great here because he could just take over the flying man, which is not really what you want with a control magic. I guess just playing out more creatures would kind of be helpful. Another Lord of Atlantis, for example, would have been nice. But unfortunately for Dawa, 
That's not in his hand, apparently, because he's just passing turn here. There we see a Demonic Tutor. Are we going to see a counter spell here? And yes, there's a Spell Blast. Nice to see a Spell Blast and not an actual counter spell. That's pretty cool, Dawa. So uh, playing the Spell Blast here, taking care of the Demonic. Or do we have some other counter magic from Bart? That's, of course, also an option. It looks like they're discussing something. There's one white, one blue. Oh, there's a Spell Blast on the Spell Blast. Oh, 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 that's so funny. I like it. A Spell Blast on the Spell Blast. So, I mean, I hardly ever see Spell Blast in action. And now I see two in, in, in the same like turn moment played out. I mean, that's pretty cool. The question now is, what is he going to look up? Is he just going to look up like a big flyer to finish it? Is he going to look up maybe some more, um, you know, discard, perhaps an Amnesia? Although Amnesia is three blue to cast. I believe he doesn't have the mana base. Anyway, he's now tapped out at this moment, so he's going to attack. There we see um, Dawa now accepting the trade. He still had that one mana open, by the way, for the ICD Mishra's Factory. So he's using that to tap down the Lord of Atlantis. There we see a Mishra's Factory by Dawa. And there's a pass turn. So let's let's see what card he looked up. Perhaps he jammed a tome to draw some extra cards. Brain Geyser, of course. No, he plays a Serendip. So there we see a Surrender Pafrit. Interesting. Are we going to see a counter spell from Dawa? No, we don't. And there we see the tap down of the Lord again. And um, yeah, I mean, it's 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 going to be tough here for Dawa, but it's not impossible. It's just one creature he's got to deal with. And it's, it's a nice target for control magic. Although, of course, if he can control it, then, uh, you know, Bart can keep tapping it down with his own IC. And that means just damage. For Dawa, but it's only one damage instead of three damage, so it's it is a better deal, but it's not ideal. Tapping two here, okay. There we see another Lord of Atlantis, so that's kind of nice. Now they're giving each other plus one plus one and Island Walk, so they're now both three three creatures with Island Walk. He's gonna take a damage from his own Serendip, and then we see a Side Blast here, so he's gonna take two from that. It's gonna go down to seven. And let's see what else is he going to do. There we see the Brain Geyser. I think it was a Demonic into Brain Geyser. That kind of makes sense. And he's just going to draw a lot of cards here and pass turn. So probably this Brain Geyser will give him the victory. But hey, he never know. Dao is still in it. He's going to animate. At least he can smash some face here. He can deal eight points of damage. That's huge, actually. And now Bart's on five. So if he can find like a double side blast, it's done. And remember, those um, a Lord of Atlantis cannot be blocked because they have Island Walk. So it's actually really a big problem here for, for Bart. Wow. I wonder what he can do here. Of course, he's in the tank. He's got a lot of cards, but does he have enough answers? He can tap down one Lord. That means he's going to take three. He's going to go to two. So, I, I mean, he wants to get rid of one of the two Lord of Atlantises because that would solve all of his problems. The question is, can he do that? And also, if he, for example, plays a Psyblast to kill one of the two Lords, it means he gets into Psyblast range himself. So it's pretty risky. You don't want to drop below 5 here when you're playing against Cyblast. There we see Hypnotic Spectre. I'm not very impressed with that. There is a counter spell. I'm not sure if I would have countered that, to be honest. Then again, he's really low, of course. There's a tap down of one of the Lords. Is Dawa actually going to win this? I mean, in my mind, Bart already had this game. But that one swing for 8 points of damage for, for Dawa was huge. Let's see what he's going to do. He's pretty much in the tank as well. I mean, the problem here, of course, for, for Dawa is his life total is quite low. So if he swings in for three, he also opens up himself. He is swinging in here, so that means he's going to go to two. He wants to block, but he can't because of the island walk. Are we going to see a side blast here for the victory? No, we're not. Pass turn. And when looking at, you know, what, what Bart can do, or he can attack for four, but, I mean, that's not enough. It means he'll die next turn. 
He needs to do something about one of the two Lord of Atlantises. He has to get rid of one of the two Lords or he's toast. Okay, he's tapping something down, so he's going for the aggro plan here. Does that mean he's got a Psy Blast in hand, perhaps? He's going to animate one. He's going to attack, put it on to three points of damage. That means he's on four. One Psy Blast can do the trick here, but if Dao has a counter spell, he's going to win the game. Going to take the damage. Going to go to four. There's probably the Psy Blast. Yep, there's the Psy Blast. And there's a counter spell. <laughs> Holy moly! Oh, I love this. Dao is taking this game, and I really thought that it was going to Bart, uh, but this kind of shows the power of somebody who really knows what he's doing with his deck. You know, the start of the game when we saw that Dao kept just attacking with his one flying man. You know, he knew, I just got to get him low enough, so he's in my reach, and that, that eight-point swing was just huge for Dao, and uh, Dao, man, I didn't expect you to win this one. Anyway, it's only game one, of course. Both players are now going to their sideboards and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. And I just hope that game number two is half as good as game number one. What an explosive cool game that was. Ooh, there's a lot of sunshine. It was really almost impossible to see the hands of both of these players. I believe Dao I saw Lord of Atlantis and with Bart I saw a side blast underground C. He is taking, apparently he took a mulligan here because one card goes to the bottom. And I believe it's Bart on the play after losing that one. Very, very close game number one. There we see the Swamp and a pass turn. There's an Island and a Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. That is pretty good. Well, it looks like somebody fixed the Sunshine, so that is really good news. There we see a Sinkhole from Bart. Dao attacking for one, playing a Mishra's Factory and a pass. There we see an Island. And he's going to tap three. There is a Surrender Perfreed. So this is looking pretty good here for Bart. Pretty good opening. Also, that single really helps him out. Kind of stops what uh, Dawa wants to do. There we see another island. He can't really attack right now. Unsummoned would have been nice, but he doesn't have one. So we see uh, Bart here going to 18, of course, taking damage from his own Surrender. There we see another Flying Man. There is a Spell Blast on the Flying Man. A lot of spell blasts, I'm loving it. And there we're gonna see an attack for three here. He's gonna to drop to 17, that is Dawa, and there's a pass turn. At least he can attack for one, putting Bart on 17. There's another island, he can actually attack for more than that. Okay, there's a Lord of Atlantis making it a 2-2 with island walk, so that means that Bart's gonna to drop to 16. Ooh, he's choosing not to attack. Oh, there's a terror. Okay, so he attacks and there's a terror on the Lord, so that means he only takes one damage. Okay. And of course, also the damage from his own Surrender. So he's now on 16, attacking him for three. Dao is going to drop to 17. So both players kind of playing the, the aggro game here. There's another Mistress Factory, meaning that uh, Dao can now swing for four in total, because he can use that Factory to pump. Or are we going to see another response here? There is a Psy Blast on the Mishra's Factory. That does mean two more damage for Bart, of course. Gonna drop to 14, taking a damage. Gonna drop to 13, pass turn, then Surrender will give him another damage. And he'll drop to 12. That is true, he is gonna drop to 12 here. And there we see an Hypnotic Spectre. That is really, really good. That Hypnotic Spectre could be the change in this game. Dawa on 11. I mean, you don't want to get damage from the Hippie because it means two extra damage, but also it means you got to discard a card and it means that you now cannot attack with your Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. If he's got an answer... Ooh, dealing one damage, dealing two damage. I'm liking this. <laughs> Pretty cool to see those cards in action, actually. I mean, Dawa also could have chosen to keep it in hand and then possibly discard it. Remember, if those cards get discarded... Uh, they deal 5 damage to the opponent, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, we saw an attack here for 3, and of course the damage from uh, Bart is taken from his own Surrender. So he's now on 8. He's gonna attack here, and we see that Dao is also on 8, so 8-8. Eight, eight. Again, a very exciting game between these two decks. There we see a tap down of the Factory. Does mean another point of damage for Bart from his own City of Brass. So he's just taking a lot of small little points of damage. And 
I mean, that's really ticking up together. He's now on six. He's going to drop to five. I mean, it's it's looking problematic. This factory is really good, by the way. He's going to attack. Dawa also on five. Going to tap down the factory again. And there's a Lord of Atlantis, meaning the Merfolk is, is unblockable. He's going to put him on four. Does he have a side Blast? Well, even if he does, he doesn't have enough mana, though. Ooh, deciding to keep it untapped. Changing his mind. Is that because he wants to potentially block an incoming factory? That could be the case, of course. He's on five. That's true. This is a good decision by Dao. He actually would have been dead otherwise. So we see Bart dropping to four. Remember, Bart has the Icy. He can tap a creature with the Icy. For example, Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. Attack with both of his creatures. And then he has to block... Uh, with the Lord of Atlantis. He has to block the factory or else he's dead. And then on the other hand, Dawa can swing back. So he's not attacking with the factory. He's not using the Icy, just attacking with the flyer, putting Dawa on two here. Bart's on four. There's a Cyblast. Are we going to see another counterspell on the Cyblast? Second time in a row. We saw it in game one. We're seeing it in game two. This is kind of insane. And he's going to tap down. He's going to... There's a lot of glare on that one land, by the way. But he's going to gonna tap down the Lord of Atlantis. And there's a Mishra's Factory in the sunlight there on the side of Bart. So he can still use that to potentially block the Mishra's Factory from Dawa. And, and, and this is going to be tough for Dawa. What, what can he do here? He just needs to get rid of that one Mishra's Factory and he's won the game. So he's going to animate here. He's going to attack... He's going to use his city because he has no other mana to do it. He's going to go to three. Is Dao going to pull off another victory? I think he is because now, remember, Merfolk of the Pearl Trident gets plus one, plus one from the Lord of Atlantis. So that means he's going to drop to one here. And then he takes damage from his own surrender. Exactly. He's going to go to one. Untap, upkeep, dead, right? Yeah. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Dao is winning this. Insane. Insane. I mean, he first game was so so close second game again super close but dawa found found the right side of the coin to win this one and, and well played sir well played but also well played here by bart and thank you both for uh, sharing your decks on the channel and of course also thank you for watching another episode right here on timmy talks the channel where we talk old school magic and that was it for today. That was the match. What an exciting match it was. Again, man, thumbs up to Dawa. Great timing with your counter spells, winning this match. It was so, so close. Thank you both for sharing this on the channel. And also a big thank you to David who organizes DadBotCon, man. It's a beautiful tournament. And if you want to see more of the tournament, keep your eye on the channel because we've got more fantastic games coming. Next time, we have these two decks for you on the channel. That is Erwin versus Juvan. I'm really looking forward to show these two uh, players go head to head here on Timmy Talks. For now, thank you very much for watching. And before you go, I'd like to ask you to leave Leave a like, leave a comment, and share it on your socials. All those things are free and really help Timmy Talks grow as a channel. And then if you're new here, welcome aboard to Timmy Talks. Please consider subscribing and ring that bell. And then last but not least, there is one thing that you can still do, and that is become a patron of the show, a sponsor. And that's actually pretty easy. It's not complicated at all. All you have to do is click click on the info card that's appearing right now. And that will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And there you can actually sign up for the Timmy Talks Patreon. And it already starts with $1 a month. The cool thing is you then have access to the Timmy Talks Discord. Your name will also be mentioned in the end scroll. And you can also participate in all the Timmy Talks events. Yes, all of them. And that just for one measly dollar. So if you can miss it, please check out the Timmy Talks Patreon page. For now, thank you for watching and let's take a look at the end scroll where we will see our fantastic, amazing, wunderbar patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Here we go.
Ich bin ein Schwarzer, 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 ich bin ein Sch